Hello everyone, Dr. Nalen here with yet another episode of Growing Together. I'm joined here with another special guest and that is Minister Alex Nevison. Yeah. You've seen him before, he's been a part of our uh, broadcast, in fact, a few times, and uh, so he's a pro at it. And we will be uh, dealing with Acts, the 28th chapter. But uh, before we go on, Acts, we want to know more about you. You um, are a leader of our uh, men's group, yep. along with um, Eric Garcia. In fact, today we had a great men's uh, service. Uh, thank you for what you did and uh, the events that are coming up. And uh, also though, you have been a part of Highland uh, for quite some time, yes. working with the youth and other things. Mm -hmm. So tell us more about you, where you come from, your family, etc. Yeah, my name is Alex Nevison. I'm from West Africa, Liberia specifically. Uh, was born in Liberia, lived there, and Civil War came and mm. uh, went to the Ivory Coast and lived in the Ivory Coast for uh, the, the time before I came to the United States. Um, it was not a good time during the Civil War. It lasted for 14 years. Wow. And that took a chunk of my life as a young person uh, who was uh, born in that area during the time of the Civil War. And I did lose my father in the Civil War. Uh, I lose my sister as well in the Civil War. Um, it was, mm. it was not a good story. Wow. It was sad mm -hmm. for me growing up as a young person without a father. And that stuck with me uh, growing up as a young person. And uh, moving in the country, came here as an immigrant, refugee. Right, right. Uh, got on the right track. And how many years was that uh, ago? Uh, that been since uh, eight years to nine years now. Eight to nine years, you came to America as a refugee. Yes. Wow, and and now you're plugging in, mm -hmm. you got your degree. Yes, You're yes. moving forward. Moving forward. Um, this country is one of the best countries in the world that we can, um, after all those tragedies in your life, mm -hmm. and you can look to with all the good people in this country to help you out and and uh, vision life, your, your dream. And coming to America, I came to this country, I stay on track, always been in church, have been uh, in church back home and always in church, and focus on education. Uh, have a family now that I'm uh, raising. All right, a, congratulations. A little, a little guy. I see a big smile to your face. <laughs> so what about your uh, time at Highland? What did, how long have you been a member at Highland? Uh, pretty much, I'm gonna be like uh, nine years as well. Uh, eight to nine years. Wow. Being in Holland, and I have fully became a member of Holland, mm -hmm. and always um, working from behind the scenes, um, working whatever the Lord wants me to do. And I have been working with youth, as youth minister, and ever since then I've been in the church. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for doing that, and again, welcome, Minister Nevison. And so let's get right into it. Uh, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Have you been tuning in every week? We have moved through the entire book of Acts. This is amazing. And so uh, let's go then um, to these uh, texts. And everyone will be looking at um, Acts, the 28th chapter. Acts, the 28th chapter. So you know, I'll be reading from the NIV. And it says, once safely on shore, we found that the island was called Malta. Mm -hmm. Now remember, this is after the shipwreck. Right. They, 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 uh, Paul told them all stay on the ground or on the boat before, and they swam the shore before they broke the boat, broke up on the uh, hitting the sandbar. The islanders showed up and showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood, and as he put it on the fire, a viper or snake, mm. driven out by the heat, 
fastened itself on his hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer. For though he escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. But in verse 5, it says, Paul shook the snake off into the fire mm -hmm. and suffered no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. Uh, and, and, and so uh, we will uh, stop there and uh, we will um, talk about this because this is an interesting text, mm -hmm. um, Alex, where uh, they, they thought Paul was a murderer first mm -hmm. and then they thought he was a god. Um, in fact, um, they did not take him to the place where they normally would take them, um, where they per, per the sick, because mm -hmm. they saw no ill effect on Paul. Mm -hmm. But as we learned last week, Paul told them we should have stayed in Crete. We should have stayed there. Now, um, you're going to look at the map. If you look at the map that's on your screen right now, you can see that they were battered and pushed by the storm across the Adriatic Sea mm -hmm. for 14 days. And finally, um, they were going to try to leave the boat. But remember, Paul said, no, in order to survive, uh, you need to all stay on the boat. So all 276 stayed there. They swam to Malta. So you can see on the map, Malta. You see that? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I want to tell you that Madeline and I toured Malta oh. on one occasion. Oh, yeah, we've been all over. Uh, they met the indigenous groups. And they started a fire, and once the fire was gone, the snake that was hiding in the wood, mm -hmm. Alex, came out and bit Paul. But Paul uh, shook it off. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you gotta just shake off the enemy. And um, but you know, there's a lot. And and at first they thought he was a murderer, mm. but when they saw no ill come to Paul, they said, "Okay, he's a god." god. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, but I think I think this is just a miraculous power of God. Mm -hmm. But Alex, Minister Nevison, um, you moved to America a few years back, as you said, you came from Liberia from the treachery of civil mm -hmm. war. Mm -hmm. um, I know you have shared with me privately. You've seen some miraculous things happen. Can you share like what Paul, because that's a miracle to be bitten by that viper mm -hmm. and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that God wants us to go and pick up vipers, <laughs> but I think it fulfills the scripture where it says uh, deadly snakes, mm -hmm. you know, will bite poison, will not harm you. Yeah. And, and I think that's important. I don't think God wants us to handle snakes, mm -hmm. but I think um, if a snake should bite us or a scorpion should sting us, God is able to do the miraculous and not allow that venom to take effect. But what can you share in your personal life? Because you have a unique time where you saw God in impossible situation in perilous times. That, that's true, Pastor. Um, during the time of civil war, like I said, um, it was a tremendous time where it, thousands of people fleeing their homes mm -hmm. and you're running in their very directions of uh, from the Civil War. If you see, we, we, we ran in, in, in the bushes mm. and you stay in the bushes where you have all these wild animals, right? You're running from war, you're running all in the bushes trying to save yourself. And so wait, wait, you're saying you went into the jungle into the jungle with wild animals with wild animals with wild animals but the amazing part of it is that you see the law that we said is a god who will always protect his people mm. that's part of the situation we went through that i went through with other family members and friends mm -hmm. losing loved ones and parents um i once was beating by a snake why were we in those bushes? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you telling me <laughs> you were bitten by a snake? And I never knew this. I'm hearing this for the first time. I'm hearing this for the first time. You were bitten by a snake in the jungle. Why we were running 
Because, I mean, you're in the jungle where you have all these wise animals and you're fleeting from life. Mm -hmm. And in the process, um, I think I came upon a snake that I stepped on and it bit me on my foot. So as we were running, I got weaker. And my other brother, like, you know, he couldn't see me running that much. So I told him something bite me. And then when he came back to tell you, it was a snake. It was a, um, a brown snake. But um, it bit me on my on my left foot, and you no, know, the, the venom's kept going on in my body. Oh man! And, and just imagine running from war yes. in the process yeah. of the adrenaline sick, is already flowing, flowing inside so of you. So now it's making that which is in you, the poison, flow even faster. Faster. So, wow. um, I I will have God to God be the glory mm. because. The healing from that pressure of snake, uh, it was just miracle. It was by the prayer of God. We didn't yeah. do anything in the bushes. We didn't have no uh, medicine. Medicine, nothing. No. But it was just no prayer. antidote. None of that stuff. <laughs> yes. You, you talking about antidotes? No, we didn't have any of that stuff <laughs> in, the, in the jungle. You don't have any of that stuff. Yeah. But it was by the grace of God. Did I, you like? kind of cut off the circulation? So Would you put a wrap around? What did yeah, you do? So my brother has to put a wrap around my foot. And what it did was, we came to this area where we had to make a stop and then make a fire. And when we make the fire, mm. they have the herbs. They got our herbs. Yeah. Smash it up, put it in the fire, and then put it around my foot to where the snip bite was. Right. And then wrap it up with cloth. So it was the herbs on the bite of the snake wow. on my legs and they wrap it up and that's what it was and only prayers mm. he you mean i didn't die from that snake that is amazing so that's what i'm talking about how god can work miracles yes he never got to the doctors he never got a shot uh that is a story yeah. wow that is a yeah. testimony and and that's what happened to paul paul uh had a tough time and uh, uh, a poisonous, venomous snake bit him, and he shook it off. Well, Alex, it sounds like you shook it off as well. <laughs> God shook it off for God me. shook it off for well, you. Yeah. He, he, he worked through the impossible situation. And I think that's what we want to encourage you, is that God can move through impossible situations. Uh, in America, we're facing the elections and the results. Uh, we, we're just grateful that you voted in America. No matter what your side you voted for, you voted. That's the important thing. Now what we must do is come together and unite as Americans. And so even though it seems impossible, uh, Minister Neverson, we can come together as Americans. Yes, we, we can. We can. Amen. All right, so let's go then to the next section. And then we'll pick it up in verse 11. So now, after all of this, mm -hmm. it says, after three months, we put out to the sea. So they stayed on the island of Malta mm -hmm. for three months with the indigenous group. They made friends there. But then, um, and all 276 survived. Mm -hmm. Then they got on another ship that was wintered in the island. It was an Alexandrian ship with the figurehead of the twin gods, uh, uh, Castor and Pollux. We put in it, we put in at Syracuse and stayed there three days. And then verse 13 says, from there we set sail and arrived at Regium. The next day, the south wind came up and on the following day, we reached Potili. At there, we found some brothers who invited us to spend a week with them. And then we, so we came to Rome. The brothers there had heard that we were coming and they traveled as far from the Forum of Apius and the three taverns to meet us. And at the sight of these men, I love this part, Paul thanked God and was encouraged. Mm -hmm. He thanked God, he was encouraged. Mm -hmm. Verse 16 says, when we got to Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself mm -hmm. with a soldier to guard him. Mm -hmm. So minister, after three months, he finally gets there mm -hmm. to where he's going. 
Now, it was interesting that, as we know, the writer of the book of Acts right. is Luke. Luke, yeah. Luke is very meticulous in his details. He's a doctor. And so Luke says that the figurehead of the twin gods were Castor, Castor and Pollock. And I looked that up. And Castor and Pollock were twin half-brothers in the Greek and Roman mythology, mm -hmm. known together as the Dioscuri. Mm -hmm. Their mother was Leda, but they had different fathers. Castor was the mortal son of uh, Tyndareus and uh, king of Sparta, while Pollock was the son of the divine god uh, Zeus, mm -hmm. and so uh, who seduced the mother Leda as he was a swan, and then he seduced her and created uh, Pollock. So these are the two heads on the ship mm. that Paul is on. Isn't that interesting yes, that sir. Luke would point that out? So I thought we had to research that. So when they got to Syracuse, look on your map again. So as you're looking on your map, you see the three days they stayed there. From there, they went to Regium, you see there. And then the next day, the south wind came, and it blew them uh, pushed them, at least sailed with them. Uh, on the following day, they reach uh, Patali. Now, it's at Patali that he spends time with his friends, and then he's shown favor because his threat is minimal, and Paul is basically under house arrest, mm. as we can see. But interestingly, when he arrives to Rome, I, I thought this was interesting. Mm. Friends came from a long, a long distance. distance. Yeah. Because they have heard about Paul before. Yes. They have heard about him. So they awaited his arrival. And when they heard that he got in Rome, they went there. They went there. They went and there. that's the kind of friends you want to have. Wow. Yeah, 30 somebody. miles, Alex. <laughs> 30 miles. 40 miles. They yeah. traveled because they knew he was coming. So yes. from um, three taverns, uh, which was uh, 30 miles, and from Apius, which was 40 miles. And again, after three days, he goes on to call the Jews together, mm -hmm. um, and he, he wants to speak to them. But I, I love it when the Bible says Paul was so joyed and encouraged. Mm. Can you talk to us about that, Minister Nevison, on how important it is to have close friends in ministry to help us through the toughest times of our lives? Because it's, it's important, pastors, um, in ministry, mm -hmm. we, we need everybody in order for the church to grow. Yes. And when you have friends in the ministry, meaning that the people that you worship with mm -hmm. are there for you, are there in your days of trouble, yes. are there in the days when you are happy, mm -hmm. because that's what you need. I mean, in ministry, you need friends. Yes. In trouble, you need friends. Right. When when things are hard, who do you look up to? You go to God, and then at the end of the day, you want your friends to come around to help you out. Yes, which amen. Is very important. And when Paul had his friends coming over to him, that sends a message that, oh, I'm not in it by myself. Mm -hmm. I have people around me who praying for me, and they're with me to share the burden I'm carrying not just you. So in the ministry, it's very, very essential that we have friends, people in the church, to make us to grow, the minister, those who've been there, the right. editor, who can push us to move forward in what we want to accomplish as children of God. And I think that's so important, what you're saying. I agree with you. At Highland Christian Center, we have a slew of, of ministers, uh, male and female, uh, that can come together yes. uh, in times of difficulty and support one another. One another, yes. And I think that it is so important and to have those friends in our lives. Yeah. And I can tell you right now, uh, COVID is on the rise, Minister. Uh, 185,000 people at the time of this recording, mm -hmm. uh, a day ago, 185,000. Now, one month ago, mm -hmm. it was 69,000 yeah. a day. Okay. Now we're at 180 something thousand. There is no denying this. You can deny it in your words, doesn't change the reality. reality okay. And people are hurting. People are hurting. They need friends, right? They need support, just as Paul needed that support. Definitely. We need friends. We need support. And most especially in the kind of situation where you have COVID, mm -hmm. is 
a disease that is unseen. You don't know. So we rely on each other. Mm. That helps to make you to know that I'm not in it by myself. I have people who care and are there with me, praying for me, talking to me. COVID is real mm. and it's on the rise. And the church needs to play the part. The church would be the last source for us to run to. Yes. Because when somebody's going through COVID, what they need, the next thing they need is prayer. They need prayer. They're on the bed, they're taking treatment, so they need people to come to And we bedside. also have practical resources. Our Highland Haven uh, team, uh, if you know of anyone who's dealing with COVID, with our Highland Haven team, we have resources um, to come to you and though that team will bring food uh, to you, which our team has been doing wraparound service, they call it, been doing an outstanding job. And, and that's what we need. And again, when I say connect, I'm not telling you go and gather and have a big party. Mm. But what I'm saying, connect on that phone, connect on that internet, connect with one another, support one another, pray. For one pray another. Pray for yes. one another. Yes. All right. Well, look, we're moving on. We're getting to our last uh, section here, and uh, we're going to pick up. So now Paul is speaking, Minister Nevison, mm -hmm. to the people. Um, the people. He's in speaking Rome. to the Jews in Rome. He's finally getting his day. Now, remember, I don't know if you remember this. Why did Paul go to Rome? To have his day before Caesar. Caesar. Yeah. That was the whole thing. Mm -hmm. His whole point of going there on his journey, shipwrecked, bitten by a snake, uh, held in captivity under Felix for two years, is, is, is to have his day before Caesar as a Roman citizen to defend his false accusation. Yeah. Well, interestingly, in this text, mm -hmm. we mentioned nothing about him standing before Caesar. Caesar. But God told him he would, so I know it happened. Mm -hmm. All right. So, because God does not lie. Right. His nope. scriptures do not lie. Nope. All right. Um, he is not a man that he can lie. All right. Picking up at verse 23. Um, they arranged to meet Paul on a certain day and came a large number to the place where he was staying. From morning to evening, he explained and declared to them the kingdom of God and tried to convince them about Jesus uh, from the law of Moses and from the prophets. Now, I love this in verse 24. Mm -hmm. Some were convinced by what he said, mm -hmm. but others would not believe. They disagreed among themselves and began to leave after Paul had made his final statement. The Holy Spirit spoke the truth to your forefathers mm -hmm. when he said through the Isaiah the prophet, go to this people and say, you will be ever hearing, mm. but never understanding. Mm. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Mm. For this people's heart has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Mm. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn, and I would heal them. Mm. Therefore, I want you to know, in verse 28, mm. that God's salvation has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will listen. Mm. Verse 30, for two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him. Mm. Boldly and without hindrance, in verse 31, he proclaimed, he preached, the kingdom of God, and taught about the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that ends chapter 28, but yeah. we're going we're gonna to deal with this text a little bit. Yeah. So he's finally getting his day before Rome. They get him before the people. He's teaching. He's convincing some, and some won't be convinced. Yeah. That's just the way it is, isn't it? Yes, that's um, real life. That's real life. But he never mentions to see Caesar. Um, at that time, it was uh, Nero. Uh, Nero. And so Nero, uh, we don't have mentioned here, but in other texts, if you juxtapose them together, you'll see. 
that Paul most likely stood before Nero. Nero. In fact, I'm going to say he stood before Nero because that's what the Bible says. The angel prophesied to Paul, Paul, you will not die. You must go to Rome. Rome. You will stand before Caesar. Okay. And uh, so uh, it was prophesied he would preach to the Gentiles and kings in Acts 9 and 15. The appearance before Caesar was a fulfillment of prophecy. God never lies. He never uh, does not meet what he said he would do in, in the scriptures. And all of the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. Paul would write to the church at Philippi, Philippians 4, 22. Again, all the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. So that tells you he had a relationship mm -hmm. with Caesar's household. So it seems that he made friends with those in the household of Caesar, waiting for his case to be heard. The emperor, again, at the time, the Caesar at the time, was the tyrannical Nero. Mm. This is the guy you read about in the history books who would take Christians and put the them lions. in, yeah, and get the lions to, in the lion's den, in the yeah. lion's den and, and if you will, for sport. Yeah. Let's just throw them in there. And so, uh, but... He was not there yet. Mm -hmm. They said in the beginning of his reign, at the time of Paul's time in Jerusalem, he was probably not as treacherous as he would become. Um, so, uh, Paul, and a historian, by the way, according to Josephus, mm -hmm. um, uh, it's recorded that the Empress Papea could influence him early on as a follower of the Lord, but then his heart shifted Shifter. as time went on. Mm. So now Paul is living on his own. He's in house arrest, according to our text. And again, it's about him trusting in God, God. minister. Mm -hmm. uh, he's gone around the globe. He's preached the gospel around the world. And, and here he is saying, you don't have eyes to see. You don't have a heart to understand. You don't have ears to hear. Mm. Hear what the Lord is saying. So the Holy Spirit spoke the truth, he says, through um, the prophet Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Minister Nevison, what is God saying to the church uh, today? Because the message was for the Jews and then he says, because you didn't listen, it's going to the Gentiles. What do you believe God is saying to the church today on never giving up with regards to preaching the gospel? Because Paul kept preaching for two years. Mm. And we don't know if he dies right here or not. Historians debate on that. But he kept preaching for two years. And uh, we know we might get rejected in our faith. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I believe what I think, the scriptures, is true. From the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. um, when we preach the gospel, some will receive the gospel and some won't. Mm -hmm. But we have to keep our faith yes. and keep the truth, which is the word of God. Mm -hmm. So their word, as you preach daily, weekly, monthly to people, people accept the truth and some don't. Mm -hmm. But the leader, the man of God, the people of God don't give up. Right. They stay in the truth and wait till the day of the coming of the Lord. Yes. Because you cannot have unwavering believe. Mm -hmm. You have to be rooted in the truth of God. And today, the church in America, the church around the world, must continue to preach the truth. Yes. And must continue to stay in the truth. Mm -hmm. There are going to be tough times. Yes. There are going to be times when the people are going to go against the people of God. Yes. The, the, the preachers will be prosecuted. Mm. They will be lied upon. <laughs> they will be called names. Yes. But as much you stay in the truth Keep and believe in the Lord, that what the Lord is asking you to do is the truth, and you do it, the time will come. Yes. That those people will be followers of you. But you don't give up. You don't, don't give, give up. up. Don't give up. You can never lose hope. Paul did not lose hope. Yes. Paul kept his faith. Mm -hmm. He waited for time. He was arrested. He was on horse arrest. Yes. He never lose hope. He also make it his duty to preach to the Gentiles and the Jews. For those, the word came for the Jews, but the Jews did not receive it first. It was the Gentiles. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It was the Gentiles. 
the Bible says he came unto his own, but his own refusing that. It means that he, the word of God came for the Jewish, yes. the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. But they were the first people to crucify him and said, crucify him, crucify him, crucify yes. him. Yes. But the Gentiles, and the Gentiles, every one of us, those who feel that they are left out, you stay part of the church. Yes. You stay part of the gospel. You can keep the faith. It's going to be hard. Terrible things going to happen. Man. Right. Terrible times going to come. But you don't give up. Never give up. Never give up. Yes. Keep the faith. Keep preaching. Keep and, teaching. And don't keep, give up. Don't give up. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I mean, you are the one to talk about never giving up. Yes. Because I mean, look at you today, nine years later, after being bitten by a snake in the refuge uh, as a the, refugee. The, coming, being tortured. Tortured? Uh, you tor were tortured. You I left that out. I got scarf. I got scarf on my head, on my back. So what did they did they stick stuff in you? Yeah, they uh well they carry weapons. So they carry knives, they carry different things. This is all knife, this is I have all on my back, on my on my head. They torture you so that you can say things. So they would just like jab you, cut you? Cut you off. Like rear cotton with knife. Wow. So the civil war was bloody. It was it was really mm. bloody. And it was Tribalism, where we call tribes against another tribe. Yeah. Uh, government powered people against another government group. So it was an ethnic war. Mm. So they were doing ethnic cleansing. Mm. Word means that my tribe, my ethnic group was at risk because my ethnic group was the group that was in power before the civil war. Wow. So the coming in power people tried to go after that continuum group of people got it cleans them so, so that's why you were under attack and had to flee and had to flee but i never gave up that's what it means to keep in the word of god pastor the word of god is the mm, light to the everything yeah. because i always pray my parent my mom was there my brother was there we always had a one bible it was wet it got wet in the bush and it was sticking together but as we had a better place to be when we dry up we read that bible all the time 14 years mm. in the civil war 14 wow. years so think about it yes when god has his plan on your life yes no matter how many years it takes, come on it will come to pass yes here i am today yes i'm in the house of god come on here i am today in america yeah i went through educations my eyes is upon a big pride oh. not just here your eyes are open your eyes are open, open to the big pride <laughs> So, wow, that that is a test. You need to write a book. You need to write a book <laughs> on that story. I mean, tortured, bitten by a snake. Just watch your dad die. Watch your sister die. Yeah, yes. Man, this, I mean, not die from an illness. No. Watch him murder. My, my father was beheaded. Beheaded oh. in your presence. Guys. Beheaded. Beheaded. Where, and that tells you to lie because they beheaded your father. And they ask you to laugh. In your you presence. Have, you watch pressure, him be You have no choice. I tell a lot of people, go on the YouTube and Google the Liberian Civil War. And you will see there's videos for it. There's movie for it. It was brutal. It was I amazing. fix it. I experience it. I live it. But through it all, God brought me truth. I'm going to have to talk to this guy. We're going to have to write a book on this because this is a fascinating story. How you have overcome and how God has lifted you up and elevated you. You have a family. Uh, yeah, you have remnants of the scars. I yeah. see them on your hand. But God has kept you through it all. Yes. And you're preaching his gospel. There you go. Thank man. you, Alex. Thank wow. You. Man, what a story. Uh, so uh, this is what a way to end this chapter uh, or this book of, of, of the book of Acts, the early church, because the early church was persecuted. The early church was traumatized. Paul was one of the most persecuted um, uh, leaders yeah, of our yeah. modern of history of the church. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I just want you to be encouraged. I hope if you can reach out to Minister Nevison and when you see him, just thank him. Uh, for keeping the faith and encouraging us to keep going on. So thank you very much for sharing. Um, and uh, I want to remind everyone that um, we still are in COVID. Um, and yes, the governor has put in a little more restrictions. Um, so we may have minimal manning at the office, we call it. Minimal manning, that's Air Force terms. 
uh, but we will still try to meet your needs every day. Remember uh, to join us for prayer. It's on the screen right now. Prayer changes things. Mm -hmm. And I love what I said today in the message. Pray in the spirit. spirit. Not just prayer, but praying in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And so also uh, remember that uh, your giving sustains the church. Mm -hmm. You're doing a fantastic job. And I want to continue to encourage you that for that. So God bless you. We pray that you stay safe in this season and in this time. And remember... Highland Christian Center is where we are building community changing and lives. changing lives. <laughs> Wait, Alex, you, you got to say it like we are building community and changing lives. Yes, yes. <laughs> God bless you. We will see you next week as we move into the book of Romans. Thank you. Cut. <laughs> right on time. That was, that was an amazing.